A lot of people who go to the gym use soreness as an indicator for if an exercise is effective or not. And also usually for if they are recovered or not. So they think that if they're no longer sore, they're ready to work out again. But there's a big problem with using soreness for these things. Because soreness really isn't a reliable indicator for exercise effectiveness and recovery. And I'm going to explain why in just a moment. But before we get into that, my name is Alphonse. He will talk about how to maximize your results from your training with as little time in the gym and with as little risk of injury as possible. First off, let's start with exercise effectiveness. Why is soreness not a reliable indicator for exercise effectiveness? There's many reasons for this. One of them is that any novel exercise, any new exercise that you haven't done before, and also any new equipment that you haven't used for an exercise before. So let's say, for example, you've been doing a row with a barbell before and you switch to a machine or maybe you've been using a machine but you just switch to another machine which has a slightly different movement and also any new physical activity in general is going to make you more sore for the first couple of weeks and if you keep performing the same exercises in the same manner over time the soreness will actually decrease and this is not because the exercise is becoming less effective but it's just because your body and your pain receptors are becoming accustomed to that exercise and therefore it produces less soreness after you've done it. Now, even though the exercise doesn't become less effective as you keep performing it over time and the soreness decreases, some people believe that you need to continuously switch up your exercises every couple of weeks or months in order to keep your program effective because they think that the soreness is related to the effectiveness of the exercise. And so, like I just explained, if you switch up your exercises, you are going to experience more soreness and therefore they think that you need to switch up your exercises exercises because they think they need to get sore in order for the exercises or the workout to be effective. And I've actually made a completely separate video about this topic, which I'm going to link down in the description, where I talk about why you don't need to do this, why you don't need to switch up your exercises every couple of weeks or month in order to keep your exercises or your workout effective. Now, another problem with using soreness as an indicator for exercise effectiveness is that soreness is going to vary between individual depending on their individual individual pain sensitivity. So even if you have two people who train equally as effectively and who recover equally as quickly, the one that has higher pain sensitivity is going to experience more soreness or experience that soreness more intensely. Now another problem is that different exercise protocols that are similarly effective can produce very very different levels of soreness. Things like negative only, negative accentuated and negative emphasized repetitions are not notorious for creating a lot of soreness. And these methods are no more effective than just regular slow control repetitions, but still they create a lot more soreness. Now lastly, another problem is that soreness is going to vary between individuals and between different muscle groups. And so some people might, for example, have quads that get really, really sore, but then have biceps that barely ever get sore. Or they might have calves that get really, really sore, but their back barely ever gets sore. And so it's going to vary between different people and between different muscle groups and so saying that a muscle group needs to get really really sore after a workout or otherwise you haven't trained it effectively just doesn't really work. Now when it comes to using soreness as an indicator for if you are recovered or not as you might understand this is also a problem because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier and so just because you're not sore doesn't mean that you're ready to work out and just because you still are sore doesn't mean that you are not ready to work out. The best way to gauge the optimal frequency for you as an individual is by keeping accurate workout records and evaluating your performance over time. And if your workout charts tell you that you need at least, let's say, two days in between each workout in order to fully recover, because if you attempt to train more frequently than that, you stop making progress or maybe even start to regress, then that is how often you should work out on average, no matter how sore you get after a workout or how long the soreness lasts. But again, all that your workout charts do is give you an average on how often you should work out. And if you are in doubt, 
doubt if you're doubting that you are completely fully recovered or if you just don't feel quite 100% on a day where you were supposed to work out, you're always better off just taking an extra day off and going tomorrow when you feel a little bit more recovered and have a little bit more energy. Now, after all of this, you might be thinking that, you know, since we don't need the soreness, is there anything we can do to reduce it? And the answer is yes. One thing that you can do that a lot of people don't know about is that if you feel really, really sore the day after you worked out, for example, you can actually go back and perform the exact same exercises that you performed in your workout, but just with less weight and not as intensely, and that actually seems to alleviate the soreness. Now again, if you're gonna do this, you wouldn't be using anywhere near the same amount of weight you'll be using in your actual workout, and you wouldn't be getting anywhere close to failure. And another thing that can help sometimes is also massage. And then we of course have things like anti-inflammatory drugs, and cold exposure like ice baths. But I don't recommend these two because those are going to reduce inflammation and we don't want to do that. We want the inflammation because the inflammation is a part of the recovery and repair process and if we reduce the inflammation we compromise our body's ability to recover and adapt from our workouts. And so what we are doing if we are reducing inflammation is that we are compromising the results from our workout and of course we don't want to do that. Now there is a place for things like anti-inflammatory drugs drugs and ice baths when it comes to sports performance where you are prioritizing short-term performance over long-term recovery and adaptation, but when it comes to building muscle, these things are counterproductive. So just to summarize the video, just because you're no longer sore doesn't mean that you're recovered, and just because you are still sore doesn't mean that you are not recovered. And you can't judge the effectiveness of a workout based on how sore you got during or after your workout. But anyways guys, that was all for this video, I really really hope you liked it. If you found this video even remotely useful, please don't forget to leave at least a like on this video. It really, really supports the channel and I highly appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this, also don't forget to click that subscribe and ring that notification bell so you can be notified the next time I upload. But with that being said, I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace.